Welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about bit level programming on our AVR chip here, the AT Mega 128-4P. You'll want to know how to do this um, because in order to control the individual pins, we have to set specific bits and specific registers without disturbing other bits in the same register. So we'll go through that and you know, and it's also been my experience that most of the students coming in haven't had much experience programming at a bit level, even though a lot of them have, or all of you have, at least some C background as a prerequisite to get for the class. But here's a pinout of the chip. And the chip has four basic ports, uh, port B, port A, uh, this one is D and C. Each one of those has eight I.O. pins. They can all be used as general purpose digital I.O. Uh, some like port A can be also be used as analog inputs and things. But they all work about the same and we need to be able to address particular pins on a particular port. So to do that each port has a number of registers associated with it. Um, I've written, put those up on the board already. There is a port a, B, C, D, and I'm using B for an example. There's a pin, A, B, C, D, and a DDR for data direction register. The port is the register you write to to make um, to an output go high or low. The pin is the register you read to read the current status of that output. Um, it could be an input, could be an output. And the data direction register is the port that you write to to make a particular pin, an input, and an output. And with the numbers I've gotten up here now, I set uh, pin B0, B4, B5, B6, and B7 to be outputs, and these three pins to be inputs. I've commanded some of these outputs on and some of the outputs off. So we can, you know, we can mix all this up. And then here's what I would read on pin B. Um, where these are outputs, I'm going to read the state. For the output ports, I'm going to read the commanded state. For the input ports, I'll read whatever is physically connected to that pin in terms of high voltage or low voltage. So that's kind of an example of the registers you would use associated with the general uh, digital I.O. port. So let's talk about how we make all this happen. So if we just treat this as a general register for a moment, stepping away from the port just to kind of get some of that out of the way. Uh, i to find my marker. Here we go. Uh, we can treat it as a port and what is that, or what does that register contain? Well, obviously it contains the binary pattern, uh, 0B, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, is one way we could write, write that. Uh, and I could assign it that way. 0B tells the compiler that it's a binary uh, expression, and then you just write all the binary bits. That's a real pain to do. We could uh, evaluate it and express it in decimal terms, right? Because this is the ones position, twos, four, six, eight, six, no, not six, one, I started counting by twos. One, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, 128, and so I could add these up. I've got 64 plus 32 plus 1, so it's equal to uh, 97 decimal, okay? Or we could treat it as a hexadecimal number, and I don't know if you've been exposed much to hexadecimal numbers, but basically the way hexadecimal works is it's the numbers from 0 through 9 and then A, B, C, D, E, F, so you get 0 through 15 essentially in one base. And um, it works out that, that the numbers from 0 to F match up with 4 bits in, a, in whatever, a 4-bit nibble. So if we look at that as two 4-bit chunks, we can say that this bit, these 4 bits over here equal to 1, so that's equal to 1. And these four bits, we have one, two, four, and four plus two is six, so that's equal to six, one in hexadecimal, and we would normally write that zero x six, one, and of course our ever necessary semicolon if we're doing that is the C, okay? So we can express these binary numbers in hexadecimal form, and it's a lot less writing, and you can go back and forth fairly straightforward. 
Or we could even interpret this register as an ASCII character. And it turns out that that register is equal to the lowercase letter a. Okay, That's just some added information. And I'll go through a little bit of more on hexadecimal at the end. I'm not going to try to make you an expert on it. I just want to make sure you've, you've seen it and you kind of, if you get hit with it somewhere down the road, it's not a big surprise. Okay. So anyhow, let's, let's look at this. This is our port B. We want to write uh, to it. We want to set a particular pin. Let's set this pin B4 right here. I want to set that pin equal to 1. How am I going to do it? Right. Um, I could just say that uh, port B equals 0, uh, I'm sorry, 0 B 0 0 0 1 0 0 0 0 semicolon. I could do a binary assignment like that and I would get a 1 in this particular place here, but at the same time I've clobbered all the rest of the registers, right? Not good. Um, what we want to do is find a way to assign a value um, to a particular pin or a particular byte, bit, excuse me, picture the bit in that byte without disturbing the other ones. Well, to do that, one way we can do that is use an OR. Now, if you remember, our truth table for an OR, if I have an input A and an input B, my output A OR B are 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. Those are the four possible values. A, 0 or 0 is still 0. 0 or 1 is a 1 because at least one of them is 1. 1 or 0 is 1. 1 or 1 equals 1. So I can OR something with a 1 and I'll end up with a 1 as long as at least one of them is 1. So if I, so what I can do in this case, is I can say port B equals port B, the old value, whatever it happens to hold, or 0 B 0 0 0 1 0 0 0, 0, okay? And I do that OR, and what will happen is whatever whatever is in these pins is going to be the same, right? Because I do 1 or 0, I get the 1. I do 0 or 0, I get the 0, and I get the three zeros. And whatever this is, I don't know, but I OR it with a 1, so I make sure that one is in fact a 1, which is what I tried to do. And then I the, um, 1 or 0 is 1, 1, 0. So now I end up with the pattern that I want, or I end up with, with, with the 1 here. I don't know why I drew it that one. I end up with the 1 there, but I don't upset the contents of any other pin by using that OR. Um, it's kind of wordy and verbose to write out that way. A simpler shortcut is I can use the shift command if I type um, one shifted to the left four bits, okay, this will take if I have if I have one zero 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 one and I shift it left, I will take all of the each one of these things and I'll move it left. The four on the left essentially fall off the table. These four move over, so I get 0, 0, 0, 1. Those four move over here, and then I pad the bottom of that with zeros. Okay, So I've taken that 1, and I've put it, moved it from this place to this place with this command, and you see that this is exactly the same as that. Okay, So that saves me a lot of typing. And another thing I can do, because this is C, and because the people that wrote C, uh, near as I can tell, they don't like to type. You know, so they have other shortcuts. So instead of writing it out like this, where it's po equals port B, or I can just say it's port B, or equals one shifted over four. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that one. I'm going to shift it over in four places to put it in that fifth position. 
I'm going to do an OR with port, the existing contents of port B and store that in port B and I get the same answer that I got from writing this all out like this. Okay? Save me some effort. Now, what happens if I want, if I have a one up here and I want to make it a zero? Obviously I can't or it with something because it's already a one, it's going to stay a one. What I can do is use an and. You know, if you remember A, B, A, and B, it's a bad and. Zero, 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 one, one, zero, one, one. So we have zero, A, uh, zero and one is still zero, and that's still zero, and then only if they're both both true do we get do we get that one. So we can use an and. Um, so if I do an and with port B, and I and it with one 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 zero one 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 one. Okay, what I will get is one and one is one. One and zero is zero. Zero. Zero, and here I had the one, but I'm ending it with the zero that I inserted in here, so I get that zero. These two, I preserve the one, and that one's a zero. So now I've got the same binary pattern, except I changed this one bit, this one single bit. This, this by the way, is called masking. We talk about masking a register. We use ands and ors to hide the parts that we're not interested in. Um, so I could write that out as port B equals port B, or I could, I'll shortcut it a little bit, and equals zero B, right? But, oops, I should have gone up here. But still, you know, writing this out the hard way. Um, now, how do I shift the zero into ones or something like that? Is there a simple way to do that? Well, it turns out there is. What I can do, just like I did before, I can say one shifted to the left four. Okay, that gives me uh, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Okay, if I put a not in front of that, the not operator just flips every single bit, bit by bit, so it's, it's the bitwise not. So that means this, this register one, 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 zero, one, 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 which is exactly what I needed up here. And then I can just say the port B and equals not one shifted four. Okay, got all that? If you have to pause the video here and kind of go back and work through the logics, go ahead and do that, okay? But that's, I've taken a one, I've shifted over four, I've inverted that entire uh, register and you know made the ones into zeros and the zeros into ones, and I do an and equals, and now what I'll do, have done is I've changed this particular bit from a one to a zero, or if it's zero, it stays zero, but I've converted it to a zero without touching any of the other bits in that register, okay? So we'll, you'll do a lot of that when you're trying to set particular bits. There's one more operator I want to touch on. Well, there's a shift right. We only talked about shift left here. There's also the exclusive or. The exclusive or um, is, is represented by the kind of the, the hat shape or whatever you want to call it. Exclusive OR is it's true if one and only one of the two inputs is true. So for zero, zero, the output is zero. So it's A exclusive OR B. For zero and one, exactly one is true. That's an out one. Zero, one and zero, exactly one is true. That's a one. One and one, it's not exactly one, it's two of them, so you get a zero. Okay? Um, that has the effect if uh, rather than writing out this whole register, uh, if I have a one and I do an exclusive or with one, I get zero, right? And if I have a zero and I do an exclusive or 
with one, oops, not an A. What are we doing? It's often abbreviated X O R, by the way, but in C we use this character. And my my res, result is equal to one. So what happens is if I have a bit in a register and I do the shift thing and all that, I do an exclusive OR. Every time I evaluate it, if I do an exclusive OR with one, I change it from whatever it is to whatever it isn't. If it's a zero, it turns into a one. If it's a one, it turns into a zero. Okay? So that's just one more binary operator, bitwise binary operator that you probably will run into. In fact, you run into it in the first program that I'm going to give you because that's how we make a particular output blink on and off. One other thing I'll mention, if I want to read a particular bit from a port or from a register, I can use the AND notation where I would AND this with 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. If I did an AND with that register, then all of these bits other than this one would be masked off and my output would just be different based on whether that particular bit is set. So that's how we mask a register and read just one bit. Okay? I promised a little bit on hexadecimal. I said earlier that it's the letters 0 through 9 followed by A through F which gets us from 0 to 15 in decimal and each hexadecimal digit corresponds very nicely to four binary bits. So it's make, it makes it very convenient to go back and forth from binary results to hexadecimal and the other way. Um, I will show you this to you. This is a chart of hexadecimal values in the binary. So we have binary values from 0 through 7, 8 through 15 in decimal. It was a decimal values, and there's a hexadecimal, and you can see it's just 0 through 7, 8, 9, A, B, C, D, E, F. And then 16 would be 0, it would be 1, 0, just like 10 in decimal, but it represents 16 because you've rolled past 15. Okay? And again, I'm not trying to make you an expert in hexadecimal and other number systems. There's also octal that's, I don't see that much more. You probably won't see it. I just want to make sure you're aware of it, and as the semester goes on, or as this degree goes on, we'll probably run over it again, okay? So next up, I'm going to do a video on the some of the quirks of setting up the Atmel Studio, and then we'll talk about programming on the breadboard in a separate video. Get you guys prepared for that, and we'll just keep right on going, right to the end, okay? Thanks. Bye.